start. There we go, start recording, fantastic. So, um, my name's Alex, I am the Grants Manager for Northamptonshire Community Foundation. So uh, for anybody who's not aware of our organisation, we're a local independent funder that is uh, focused on place-based giving. So that means that our grants um, and funding goes out to organisations which are based in Northamptonshire. So we are not um, limited by a theme um, or uh, so yeah, for instance, let's say like with the Arts Council, they specifically fund arts and cultural projects, or perhaps some of the other funders that you've seen today might, for instance, specify in uh, capital projects. We fund a whole wide range of different projects. They just have to be happening in Northamptonshire and uh, be delivered by organisations in Northamptonshire. We work with a wide range of different donors and fund holders and philanthropists. So you may see from our website that we have some funds which are with corporate organisations such as Avon. And we also work with local family trusts. Um, and we also have in the past delivered funding uh, with you know, different local authorities as well. And we are actually part of a network of community foundations across the UK. So I believe there's 46 or it might be 47 now community foundations across the UK. And oh, as part of that work, we're able to also deliver national funding pots as well. So for instance, uh, DCMS, um, through them, we've delivered national emergencies trust funding through the pandemic. Also, in the past, we've delivered the tampon tax fund, which came down from um, national government. So we have a wide range of different funding programmes on offer. And again, that might make us slightly different from some of the funders that you've seen today, who may have one or two separate pots of funding, where we've got multiple different pots of funding available at different times of the year. And new funds pop up and then some close and then as I said, other ones pop open again. So let's have a look through at uh, what we've got available. So how to apply. So the majority of our applications are online through our website. So we have an online application process. We do have some funds where um, we have asked for an expression of interest, which is just a Word document that you fill out and email into us but the majority go through our website. We're able to look at draft applications if we're contacted by email. So if you haven't applied to us before and would like some extra input on an application, we can have a look at those. And of course, if you're looking through and there's a whole host of different funding programmes and you're not sure which one is the right one to go for, you can of course contact the grants team to get some more information and guidance. We mostly have two different types of pro funding programs. Some are done on a rolling basis, which means that you can apply at any time. There's no fixed deadline uh, for applications. And we, and we sort of assess those as they come in and award them um, sort of on that basis. And then we have others where there's a fixed application deadline which they, or the, you know, the application, the supporting documents need to be in by. And then there is a set um, grants panel, which takes place normally between sort of eight to six weeks after that application deadline date. So again, just keep an eye out when you're having a look through our different funds about what type of grant it is, whether it's a rolling program or whether there's a fixed application deadline date. We have different panels that take, uh, take place throughout the year. So we have April, uh, June, September, November and January. So we've got another panel coming up at the end of this month. And we normally award around £1.2 million each year uh, to organisations and individuals in Northamptonshire. Obviously, during the pandemic, that doubled to about 2.4 million because of the increased amount of funding that we got from, as I said, organisations such as National Emergencies Trust and, and DCMS. 
Um, but on average, we're awarding roughly about £1.2 million each year. So what, uh, what's the eligibility criteria? So for the majority of our funds, we're open to local voluntary and community organisations who are constituted. We're open to registered charities, uh, community interest companies and social enterprises, as long as there are um, either there has to be at least two directors who aren't related and we ask that there isn't any person with significant control um, or if there is that it's split evenly amongst people who are not related um, and the same goes with companies who are limited by guarantee without capital share. So as part of our applications, we asked to see some supporting documents. So we asked to see a copy of the constitution or governing document, a bank statement in the organization's name, a copy of a recent set of accounts, obviously relevant policies like safeguarding policy, equality policy. And as I've said, it ha you have to be based in Northamptonshire providing um, projects to people living in Northamptonshire. We also ask that groups think about a priority need and um, you can evidence that in lots of different ways. So that can obviously be in discussion with your existing community um, beneficiaries that you're working with, um, or it also could be through some hard data and statistics. So on our uh, website, we have a section called Northamptonshire Insights and on there we have um, some different data sets which you can have a look at. Some of them are, are done by uh, ge you know, specific geography, some of it are done by um, particular themes, so for instance uh, crime um, or for instance focusing on children and young people. And then also a few years ago we had a, we published along with um, the University of Northamptonshire, um, sorry of Northampton, um, the Hidden Needs Report which looked at uh, the specific needs of Northamptonshire as a county. So all of that information is available on our website if you want to have a look through and see. Um, we should be also updating Northamptonshire Insights with some more information um, in the future as well. So it's always good to have a look um, and obviously you feel free to use that information if you are getting um, looking at other funders as well um, as it's always useful to be able to back up what your ask is in a grant with, with some useful statistics or data. So now we go on to some of the funds that we've got on offer currently. So this one is the High Sheriff Initiative Fund. So the High Sheriff Fund is focusing on uh, working with young people to tackle youth violence. Um, and it can either be in a preventative way or in, in providing intervention so whether that's working with young people to um, obviously help um, provide activities that are going to take them away from possibly becoming involved in crime or for instance if young people are already involved in crime or um, antisocial behavior uh, both focusing on ways of stopping them reoffending. So lots of different projects uh, can be sort of looked at and focused on under that umbrella. It's for grants for up to £5,000. It's a relatively short window um, that we've had this, uh, this fund open for because normally it does get oversubscribed. So the deadline for expressions of interest is the 10th of June. If you go onto our website, you'll be able to go onto the funds page and you'll be able to download a copy of the expression of interest form. Um, and it will provide all, you know, it shows you all the questions that you need to answer. Um, and as I said, it's focusing on preventing and reducing crime and antisocial behavior. And with this fund, it will be looked at by the High Sheriff and then um, shortlisted organisations will be um, asked to be involved in a project visit day uh, towards the end of July so it's likely going to be awarding grants from August onwards so it's just good to have that timeline in your mind when you're thinking of uh, if you are thinking of applying to this fund. Uh, with this fund I should also mention it covers the whole county of Northamptonshire. 
onto Rachel's fund, which is similar in the sense it's for all expressions of interest. So again, pop onto the website to get a copy of the form to fill out. And again, similar to the High Share of Fund, um, this fund will be a, a donor directed decision. So they'll be involved in the in the decision making and rather than a project visit, this will be an informal interview where the fund holder would like to have a chat with um, shortlisted organisations that apply. And this uh, project or this fund is looking to support projects which are focusing on supporting young people and adults who have um, mild learning difficulties and they're looking to support these young people and adults to live independently. And it could be, for instance, um, there's some examples that we've got up there about providing educational or employment opportunities or ways to help prevent loneliness. And the reason there's a focus on um, mild learning difficulties is because the fund holder often thinks that there's a, often sees from um, their own experience that there's a gap in provision sometimes for people who have mild learning difficulties. So this is a, a slightly larger fund, so a grant, so you can apply for up to £10,000. And the projects, um, all of the projects I'm going to be, of the funds I'm talking about today, is the, the running time of the grant is for a maximum of up to a year. So also that's something to bear in mind when you're looking um, at the different funds and how to apply. So now we move on to the Avon Fund. So this is another expression of interest form. So the Avon Fund for Women and Girls is focusing on um, addressing violence against women and girls and helping women and girls recover after the pandemic. So this is a grant for up to £3,000 that groups can apply to, apply to. As you can see, they've provided a list of different types of projects that they're looking to cover so whether that's targeting um, women who and girls have experienced or at risk of experience um, violence and abuse people who sorry women and girls who want to obviously uh, tackle financial and technology technological control of women which is that sort of coercion aspect um, which they're they're aware of as a funder happens uh, to women in abusive situations and then also looking at how to support women and girls in terms of education and employability projects and they're looking also at they want to sort of focus on women and girls who may pay may possibly come from a background um, where there might be additional barriers to accessing services as well so again, expressions of interest, this will be, um, you've got slightly longer to apply for this one, the deadline's the 27th of June, and again, there'll be a short project visit that um, is involved for projects which are shortlisted, which will happen at some point in July, so again, looking to award from August onwards. So now we'll look, go heading on to looking at the rolling programs. So this is a fund which was opened last year um, and closed, it was fully allocated. So closed and is now reopened after we've um, did some campaigning to raise some additional funds for this. So it's the Northamptonshire Welcome Fund and it's focusing on projects which are going to be supporting refugees and asylum seekers, um, particularly those uh, from Afghanistan or Ukraine. It can provide um, grants for a wide range of different projects. So again, some examples that are up on the slide in terms of networking and reducing isolation or providing um, support and essential items. So this, uh, the application process is open. So applications can come um, from today onwards. Uh, you can apply for up to 3000 pounds, but it will be awarding from July onwards for this fund. Um, so it's a relatively short turnaround in, in terms of grant giving. So that's a, a, a good one to look out for if you're looking to support you know, families from either Afghanistan or Ukraine. Then we've got uh, the Constance Travis Endowment Fund for Northamptonshire, similar size grant for up to £3,000. Again, it's a rolling programme, so it can apply at any time. Um, 
from June, so now onwards, and then awarding from July onwards. This is a much more um, broad fund, I would say, in terms of themes. So as you can see, it covers a whole different um, different themes and goals that we're looking to tackle. So reduced inequalities, um, health and well-being, um, tackling poverty and hunger. So it's got a whole wide range of different aspects of um, projects that it could fund. So it's it's definitely good if you're thinking of a, a small, a relatively small project that you want to deliver, um, and it can tackle, uh, it can provide funds relatively quickly, and that's something that sort of we picked up on in terms of our learning from the pandemic about trying to ensure that funds can be accessed relatively quickly. So now we're going on to our more regular grant giving. So these are applications uh, which would go forward to a grants panel. So this is the Northampton Queen's Institute Relief Fund. So it gives the game away in the title. It's specifically for Northampton. So it's uh, for grants of up to £5,000 and it's about tackling um, health and well-being. So improving the health and well-being um, of people living in Northampton. So it could be, for instance, projects which are looking to improve um, mental health. Um, it could be advocacy and support groups. It could be using the arts or physical exercise to improve health and well-being. Um, uh, it can, it's apart from being geographically spe specific to Northampton, it's quite broad in terms of as long as it's improving the health and well-being of people, um, it's a fairly, fairly broad, um, it can fund a fairly wide range of different projects. So this has an application deadline of the 5th of August and those applications would then be going on to a grants panel at the end of September. So awarding from October onwards. So again, just bear that in mind when you are looking at um, either developing a project or applying to this fund. So we've moved from Northampton over to the north of the county. So this is the Margaret Giffen Fund, which um, focuses on tackling disadvantage and poverty across North Northamptonshire. So this is a grant for up to £3,000. And again, they've got some examples of the different types of projects that this fund could uh, could provide so obviously things like tackling child poverty and food poverty which are obviously quite prevalent at the moment giving access to low cost or free activities and this is again another application deadline of the 5th of August going to that September grants panel so it could be for projects that you're thinking about doing in the autumn or perhaps uh, for Christmas if, um, if during that school holiday period, there's some different types of um, projects that you could be delivering during that time period. And then we've got the, the Compton Fund for Arts and Culture. So again, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. It's focusing on arts, culture and heritage projects within Northamptonshire. So this covers the whole of the county and it's grants for up to 5,000 pounds. This has a slightly later deadline of the 7th of October. The reason for that is that it's a relatively small part of funding that we're delivering. So we've split it across the financial year. So we um, have allocated some at the start of the, this financial year in April, and then we're doing the second half um, being available, uh, obviously deadlines in October, and that'll be going through to a grants panel at the end of November so therefore you've got to be thinking sort of December onwards in terms of the grants being available and allocated so again just bearing those timelines in mind then we've got the Northamptonshire Federation of Disability Sports so this is um, a relatively small grant so it's for up to a thousand pounds and the focus of this fund is about increasing the number of people who have a disability um, or in terms of might have a sensory impairment or a mental health problem about getting them active in sports uh, or physical activity. So this is um, 
has a deadline of the 5th of August as well. This doesn't go forward to a grants panel. This is a donor directed one. So this will be looked at by the fund holder and reviewed by them. Um, but it's a great fund if you are wanting to perhaps buy some equipment or help with some extra training and coaching to be able to make your sports club as inclusive as possible. And then here we've got some quite geographically specific funds. So for instance, at the top, we've got um, the KHL Big Local Community Chess Fund. So this is a grant which is specifically focusing on Kingswood and Hazel Lees um, in Corby. So projects which are for those specific two estates. It's a grant for up to £5,000 that you can apply for, for projects which are based in that area. Then we have some wind farm funds. So as you can imagine, um, what happens is we've got some energy companies in the county who have got wind farms set up. And um, then we, so then they provide some specific funds to the people who live within close proximity to the wind farms. So you can see we've got Burton Latimer and Cranford covered. Yelvertoft, Clay Cotton, Crick, Lilbourne, uh, Rushton and Pipwell, Winnick, Cold Ashby, West Haddon and Gillsborough. So um, just to sort of mention with the wind farm funds, they have set deadlines, which you can find those out on our website. And with the KHL Big Local Community Chess Fund, that's a rolling programme. So you can apply at any time and with the KHL programme, that is, again, a donor directed decision that's decided by the big local partnership in Kingswood and Hazel Lees. So that's the contact information for myself um, and Sandy, who's our grants team officer. We're just in the process of recruiting a programmes, a new programmes officer. So hopefully we'll be back up to full speed soon. Um, but there's our contact details there if you want to send us an email or give us um, or have a look on our website for more information. So I'm going to stop sharing now and we'll see if anybody has any questions. I can see that there's one in the chat. So we've got a football club which have recently changed their status to a limited company. They're looking to set up a lease for 25 to 30 years with the local parish council. Would you be able to help with the solicitor's costs? Um, it's a bit of a tricky one, that. Um, so most, it depends, partly depends about where your where the football club is um, in terms of which sort of funds you'd be geographically um, able to apply to. Um, and then I think also part of it would be thinking about what kind of community benefit it has in terms of solicitors costs, that might be something that we would maybe think that maybe your football club could perhaps um, fundraise for yourself. And then we would perhaps maybe look at funding other aspects of the club. It's, I know it's quite tricky with things like solicitors costs, but um, we can always have you know, a separate conversation about this. Um, so none of the specific wind funds mentioned Daventry. So a lot of those wind farm funds are quite close to Daventry, but they are very geographically specific to um, to sort of within a certain mile radius of the wind farm fund. So even though a lot of those wind farms such as Yelvertoft and Winnick may be fairly close to Daventry, they're not close enough, sadly. Um, so uh, Jenny, did I say that you had your hand up? Yeah, please. And it's probably a question you've had a million times before, but I am still confused by it, I'm afraid. Can you explain to me, because I've tried to apply for more than one funding stream for different projects in the past and also for more than one funding stream for the same project and been rejected. Can you just explain the rules to me as to if we see something on your list and we think we could apply for that and that, how does that work? Sure. So, so we, 
we had it's probably more been more strictly put in place in the past but we've always had sort of given the guidance of um organizations being able to have two live grants at any one time but from different funding pots now during the pandemic we eased off on this rule um, because we had a lot of um, grants going out the door a lot of funding available um, again we're sort of still trying to be fairly flexible in the number of grants that groups can have but also we also have to be mindful that groups don't you know, organizations don't monopolize the funding as well. So that's something that we try to sort of juggle as a fundraiser um, or a fund giver rather. Um, now, in terms of you know, having multiple grants open, so if you have two live grants, they have to be for separate projects for um, separate funding pots. Okay. If we funded um, yeah, you know, a project twice from two pots of funding, then we're we're in the danger of um, doing duplication, basically. Okay. So uh, funding the same thing twice, and again, that's getting that would basically raise some questions around um, whether a group was monopolising the funding available because their project is getting funded twice, in essence. Okay. Now, sometimes there is a bit of um, there are because sometimes obviously some of the funding that we're giving out is donor directed so behind the scenes, as well as the funds that can be sort of seen on our website, we do have some donor directed funds which um, we liaise directly with our donors and our fund holders with and sometimes they do want to fund a project that has been already funded through a different stream, but that's down to their own discretion. Um, okay. So there, so there is uh, sometimes there is a grey area, um, but if you if anybody has any questions about that, then we can, you know, about a particular instance, then we can obviously have a, a chat about it. But the general rule of thumb is, if you have different projects and different funds, is the that's the sort of main thing: different projects, different funds. Okay, okay. And when a fund is used, do you count that as from when you get the feedback form back? So that, um, that grant has finished, so you can then apply it, for something different if you need to. The end of grant report needs to be signed off as complete. Before, so yes. let's say you have a Queen's Institute grant and it's live. Um, that will be live until it is signed off um, okay. as complete. And once the end of grant report has been sent in and then a member of the grants team have said, you know, we've signed off and now it, it's done. OK, yeah, I get that now. Brilliant. No Thank you. That's all right. Um, let's have a look. I'll just have a quick look. Is there any let's oh, I've just spotted a question. Is there anyone to contact about support with resource as opposed to money? i.e. location to use that is where i would suggest that you get in contact with your local infrastructure organization so the fabulous people who are running these sessions um, this week so daventry contact center voluntary impact northamptonshire groundwork um, northamptonshire south northlands volunteer bureau there's lots we're very lucky that we have quite a few local infrastructure organizations across the county and not only can they give you advice about um, being able to recruit volunteers but also you know things like searching out venues or um, you know, advice around governance in terms of um, or fundraising as well so really I would really suggest utilizing the great resources that we have in the county with our local infrastructure organizations if you are in need of um, any support and advice um, that would be my first port of call any other questions uh, yeah, Oliver. Hi, hi, Alex. Um, I just uh, we applied before, um, and uh, we got rejected because we also operate in the southeast as well, and our currently our registered um, uh, business address is in the southeast. 
However, we're looking to grow and develop our services in Kettering and North North Hants and hopefully into West North Hants. Um, we've just uh, got our, an office in uh, Kettering Centre um, and we're looking to change our business address. Would that then be um, a way for us to then uh, apply for fund, reapply for the, for the funding that we were looking to get? Um, so it's important to note that because we are a place-based funder, we don't fund national organisations. So if you operate across different areas of the country, you'll be classed, we'll see you as a national organisation in the same way that we don't fund national charities because we're focused on small grassroots organisations that are within Northamptonshire. There are lots of national funders, uh, many of who are uh, taking part in this funders fair who will be open to organisations and charities that work across multiple areas but we're focused on um, Northamptonshire based organisations. Uh, let's have a look. Anybody else got their hand up or want to ask a question? Alex, there's one more in the chat. Uh, Another one in the chat. Yeah. Somebody that wants to purchase some new goalposts for an adults and youth team to share. Goalposts, goal great. Okay. Yeah. Which is the best fund to apply for? They're in Yardley Gobian. Oh, I don't know where Yardley Gobian is. Um, so possibly a good one to go for would be the Constance Travis Endowment Fund for Northamptonshire, because that's across the county. Um, so you could that would be a good one to go for in terms of um, possibly looking at health and well-being. I think part of the, that fund, we say that um, we don't do capital projects, but I think that's more in lines of um, sort of larger capital items like buildings or vehicles or things like that. If you're purchasing things like goalposts um, or equipment to sort of do some gardening or things like that, then those sort of smaller end capital things um, are fine. Um, so yeah, have a look at the Constance Travis Fund or if you fit into, um, you know, depending where you're based, there might be some more geographically specific funds that you could also apply to. I think that might be, that might be us finished. I can't see any other questions, no. but if I've missed any, then please shout out. But I think we're, other than that, we, we should be done. Um, I'm doing a session on Thursday, which is sort of a hints and tips session on applying for funding. Um, that's going to be covering the, the basics, as it were, of applying for funding. Um, so if you feel like you need to brush up on the basics, then, then that's a good one to go to. Um, but again, if you're looking at maybe applying for larger funds, um, from national organisations um, and want a bit more in-depth knowledge, then again, local infrastructure organisations are amazing and um, there's a lot of advice and expertise from those organisations that you can tap into. But yeah, as I said, hints and tips on, on Thursday if you need them. <laughs> Fantastic, Alice. Alex, is there any more questions? Just one more chance to ask something if not I'll draw it to a close then so can I just remind everybody that this will be uploaded onto the Northampton North Northamptonshire Council's website